Okay, I think we are ready now. Uh, I think you guys can hear me clearly. Yeah? Uh, good afternoon, everyone who in the, some country, I think Australia, Malaysia is in the afternoon. And then good morning for our agent partner in Indonesia. Uh, my name is Johnny. I'm the marketing director for Yes Education. And then I hope you all are keeping safe and healthy. So uh, thank you for uh, participate uh, today agent training. So today um, we have Christine. Uh, Christine is the uh, marketing uh, development manager from William English Institute. He see based in Sydney office, Sydney campus. So yeah, I think I'll pass it to you, Christine. Hello, everybody. Can you guys hear me well? Hello? I think they're all good, Christine. Okay, so I just keep on going, yeah? Yep. I see someone still doing... Uh, okay. Sorry, Christine, just one minute. Uh, guys, if you do have any questions, so we will do a Q&A in the last 15 minutes, and then uh, you can put all your questions in the, in the group chat. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Johnny, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Kristen, and um, I am the representative of William Andrews Institute of Tape in New South Wales. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, to be here today um, in this challenging time. But we all have to look forward to the future and the potential after this all shall pass. Uh, so, um, Let's be positive and uh, we still have to look at recruitment potentials in the coming in text or even this July, for example. So I'm really happy to have a chance to be here today. Uh, thank you for arranging this, um, Johnny. I, just some side questions. I've got a seeing on the screen that people are uh, entered the waiting room for this meeting. Is there anything I yep. need to do? I just add it all. Yep. Okay. Sure. Awesome. Okay. So I'll leave that with you. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so um, today I'm just going to give a presentation about William and this Institute. Uh, the presentation will have um, four different sections. So firstly, I'm going to talk about some general information, introduction about us as an institution. Um, secondly, I'm going to talk about our courses, the courses that we offer, especially in the Sydney campus because it's a little bit different from the city campus and the Melbourne campus, which is our mother campus. And I'm going to talk about the selling points to help you promote the courses. And lastly, I will talk about the entry requirements um, in terms of academic, in terms of um, English proficiency. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know during the presentation. Or if you want, you can wait until the last 15 minutes and we're doing a Q&A session. Okay, ask me as many questions as you want today. Um, so first of all, let's just talk about William Andrews Institute general information. So who are we, where are we, and what have we been doing in the past um, decade? William Andrews Institute is proudly a part of TAPE Victoria, so we are a government institution, but not only we are TAPE in uh, Australia, we are also the only specialist TAPE in Australia. What is a specialist TAPE? So, um, for example, TAPE New South Wales, they have a lot of courses and offer a lot of programs under one umbrella for TAPE New South Wales. Uh, for TAPE Victoria, and for us especially, we divide different specializations in different institutions. So for example, we are the only specialist center that deliver only culinary arts, hospitality, hotel, tourism, and events. So everything, every, every of our courses we offer are about hospitality and we don't do business, we don't do IT, we don't do child care nursing, we are just hospitality and that's what we are famous for. Um, we have been in the industry since 1940. So I always 
do a job that we are basically a grandmother in the industry. So we've been here for 80 years. We are going to celebrate our 80th birthday this year, carrying a little bit of heritage with us. Uh, we have been supporting Australia since World War II, so we train um, quality uh, qualified chefs and kitchen assistants that sent with Australian troops um, and shoulders in World War II. We have campuses across Melbourne, Sydney, and Asia. And every year we receive 22,000 enrollments, including 1,800 international students from 60 nationalities all over the world. Now let's have a look at the campus that we have from the maps. So our location. The first campus that we opened in 1914 by Sir William Andrews, um, it's in Melbourne. So that's basically our mother campus. It's located on 555 Latrop Street in the middle of the city. Uh, we opened second campus in Australia in Sydney um, in 2013 and we moved to the new campus in Sydney in Alexandria since 2018. We have our own campuses in Singapore and Sri Lanka and joined campuses in China, in Thailand, and also in Vietnam. So we have pretty good global um, presence, especially across Asia. So, um, because you guys can be here, I really hope that in the future, um, when it's all shall pass, I can receive each of you in our campus and then um, have a look at our actual facilities. But at the moment, um, I just put up a video with the campus, like a virtual campus tour, so you can have a look at our Sydney campus. I'm going to play the video now. <laughs> of understanding and um, visualize um, the, how our facilities and how campus look like. Now, um, on top of the classrooms and the modern facilities that we're having, uh, something that we need to note down is that our kitchens, uh, we have two kitchens on the on side of the campus. Um, same two, but one of the kitchen, we actually call it a super kitchen. As you can see in the video, 
It actually can fit 60 students with individual benches at the same time. So we actually um, are confident to say that it is the biggest training kitchen in New South, New South Wales. Um, on top of that, we also have our uh, own outlets, our retail outlets on campus. We have a cafe downstairs that are run by students under the supervision of a cafe manager and our trainers. Um, and upstairs, we have a restaurant, a training restaurant that we call a restaurant rubric. And um, this restaurant is also served, also um, cooked, so food are also cooked by our students under supervision, but basically they are all run by our students. So a lot of practical elements um, and on-hand experiences will be delivered by the time they are on campus. Okay. Um, so that's the video about our campus, like a virtual campus tour. And I want to show you a short video as well. So you can have a grasp of what it's like, um, as William and Lucy, the whole brand. Um, this video, the next video that I'm showing you is a very short video, but it includes our images in the Melbourne campuses as well, and some statistics that are worth noting now when it comes to the hospitality industry and also our activities and our profession. Yeah, yeah, conference. Yeah, like the conference. <laughs> 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 Uh, no, it's okay. I think some of the participants uh, didn't mute the microphone, so all good. No worries. Okay. All right. So that's a little bit about us in terms of general information and introduction. Now I want to move to the next part of the presentation and talk about the courses that we offer. Um, now, please keep in mind that in Melbourne, as I mentioned, our mother campus, because we've run the campus for a very long time, um, there's a wider range of courses when it comes to Melbourne campus. But in Sydney, the courses that we're offering um, are a little bit more limited, but at the same time, we chose the best courses that, um, that are the most popular in Melbourne to deliver in Sydney first, because we um, started gradually and then try to bring all the courses curriculum here down in Sydney in the coming time. 
So um, at the moment, we offer courses in three different areas, food and hospitality, resort and hotel management, and travel and tourism. Uh, food and hospitality, including commercial cookery and patisserie, resort and hotel man management is pretty straightforward. In travel and tourism, we offer a course called a Certificate 3 in Aviation. Um, but not for pilot training, it's actually for a uh, cabin crew, so for those who want, who want to become a flight attendant or ground service operator. Okay, now I'll go through each area in more details. First of all, food and hospitality, including cookery and patisserie, basically are the most popular courses in Sydney that we're offering. So about 90% of our students actually chose this program, either in cookery or in patisserie. And the career outcomes is not limited to only chef, a cookery chef or patisserie chef, um, but also to restaurant manager, to chocolatier, to food service, audit, and um, a lot of more um, career outcomes that there might be. Um, why study foods and hospitality at William Anglis? So by studying at William Anglis, the students can be a part of a flurry of national and international culinary competitions. That's done from the fact that we have been in the industry for a long time, giving us access to a lot of industry partnerships. And also with the quality of our, our um, education, we always get industry partners coming in and ask, do you have any competitors that you want to introduce in this competition, for example? Uh, one of the examples of the national culinary competitions that our students attend every year is the Nestle Golden Chef. And um, the, uh, yeah, it is a, um, these, uh, I'm sorry, for the Nessie, I'm sorry. <coughs> mm. The um, Nestle Golden Head Chef competition and the Club Chef competitions are the two uh, competitions that our students attend every year. Uh, on top of that, students get to visit and do a lot of school excursions to restaurants, to wineries, to sustainable farms and fruit producers. So we try to link them to the industry at a very early stage, um, give them that early access to the hospitality industry that they will be in, give them that engagement and chances to connect and do some networking with employers since they were on campus. Um, Food and hospitality, as they are our very main courses and most popular courses, we want to look a bit more into the industry status. What is the job outcome and the career demands for hospitality? Um, now at the moment, everything seems slow and it's not, you know, it's not the usual circumstance with the pandemic and everything. It's very unexpected. So um, it's very um, challenging to say at the moment, yes, hospitality jobs are not, um, you know, into a very potential uh, scope at the moment. But I do strongly believe that when this all shall pass, when the lockdown is lifted, the hospitality industry will pick up again, will be one of the first industries to pick up again and will be at really high demands again. Um, as the projection that we've looked at, um, at normal circumstances, by 2023, we expect to have um, to employ total 970,000 employees in the industry, so nearly a million. I keep mentioning to students and agents as well about the hospitality potentials, and I, I'm sure you know it very well as well. But now we look at this, the statistics, and then we can see that it's actually hospitality is the career with the actual jobs. Um, where people skills, people's interpersonal skills are required very, at a very high level. That's why it cannot be taken over entirely by machines or by robots or by automations. Um, so yeah, the demands for this industry were just only picking up and they will go higher and higher. Um, of course, in the normal circumstance, 
courses that we're offering in terms of food and hospitality. I'm going to actually move the screen a little bit from here. Okay, there you go. All right, so cookery and patisserie courses follow a very um, similar sequence and progression structure. So when I explain about this cookery, it's also applicable for our patisserie course, as you can see on the next slide. Um, cookery and patisserie start from a certificate three that goes for one year. And the highest level that student can attend is the Bachelor of Culinary Management that can be delivered over a four years period. Now, if you look on the screen, you can see certificate three is a one year program and student can choose to do a standalone certificate three. Now, if they want to get a certificate four, they will add another six months, six months, which is another semester to make it one year and a half and they will get the certificate four. Now, when you've got a student who wants to do a, a package of certificate three and certificate four with us, that doesn't mean the student have to do one plus 1.5 years. In total, they will have to do one year and a half because this certificate four includes the units that will be delivered in the certificate three. Now say if the students want to, oh my God, if the student wants to attend a diploma of hospitality management from the certificate four, they will add another six months and complete the package of certificate four and diploma of hospitality management in two years. This is basically the most popular package that the students normally apply for. A package of set three, set four, and diploma of hospitality management give them two years duration of study full time. Now, this, one, this qualification, this package can give them an assess to the graduate um, visa, the 485, of one year and a half, of the one year and a half, 485 temporary visa after this two years program. Um, now say if they want a little bit more time, for example, after they finish their diploma is when they can apply for their provisional skill assessment, they can provide their English score that is required, that is when, they probably need a little bit more time on campus or in Australia. So they can add another six months to study advanced diploma of hospitality management. And the package of set three, set four, diploma and advanced diploma in hospitality management will be two years and a half. Now advanced diploma of hospitality management is a bit more higher level. So certificate three and certificate four it's when the students are mostly in the kitchen. The practical elements um, in our courses compose to up to about 80% of the time student on campus. Now, I normally have a question from an agent asking, so when the students start the practical units in the kitchen? There's no when for it, because as soon as they start their study, they will be straight away in the kitchen, so even in the first week. So a lot of practical and hands-on experiences and units. And by the second um, month in their first term, they already start working and supervising and managing the cafe downstairs. So basically, they will have a lot of practical units. Um, the diploma, it's, so after they finish the one year and a half, basically in the kitchen, they move on to the Diploma of Hospitality Management. That last six months is when they will be front of house. So we'll learn food and beverages, table etiquette, budget management, and restaurant management. So that's when they're doing that um, front of house services. Now the certificate four in one year and a half has, um, in Sydney, has a very special um, initiative and a very special program to it that we call a work placement element that is not um, guaranteed, that is not offered in our Melbourne campus. 
So in Sydney campus, if the students study certificate four in cookery and patisserie, they will enjoy in the last semester um, a 10 week period of internship work placement that we guarantee. So we find the job for students. In some circumstances, um, if all the employers that we offer the students, they don't fit in with the students. For example, all the students feel like they don't want to work with those employers, they feel free to, they, they have the option to go and find the employer for themselves. As long as they find that 10 weeks period, when they get paid internships, so they can work basically 24 hours per week under that internship program, plus the 20 hours per week uh, in their student visa, giving them 44 hours per week work rise during that 10 weeks program. Um, okay, so after finishing the advanced diploma of hospitality management, which is mostly theory, so there will be no practical units when it comes to advanced diploma of hospitality management. It's mainly budget management, restaurant planning, so very close to the bachelor degree. If they still want to proceed into another level, they can go for a bachelor of culinary management. Now I will explain in the next slide how that package of bachelor in culinary management with diploma work you can see how it works in terms of the pathway. So this patisserie slide, is, it copies 100% what is the structure and what's the delivery progress of our commercial cookery course. Okay. Um, the package of Bachelor of Culinary Management stage entry from our diploma, you can see on the screen here, so if the student finishes a diploma of hospitality management or equivalent with, this is very important, with a cookery or a patisserie background, regardless of what institutions that they come from, they can get a one year exemption into our bachelor degree. So the student finishes this diploma can enter the second year of our bachelor degree. So it will leave the remaining duration for three years only. And this is the structure of the course for stage entry. Stage entry is the term that we call for students that don't start from the beginning, but they have credit exemptions. So as the student finish diploma, they enter our second year, study the first year, all theory, really theory um, assignment and very bachelor oriented. After finishing the first year, which is the second year in the bachelor degree, they will then enter a 12 month industry work placement. And that probably is the most, is the best selling point in our bachelor degree. Student will enjoy a 12 months block of industry work placement where they can work full time and they don't have to go back to school at all in that one year. During that one year, they can work anywhere they want. Even if they go back to Indonesia, if they go back to Malaysia, Vietnam, anywhere in the world, as long as they have evidences paper based that they, are, they have been working for that whole one year, it will be accepted. So as soon as they start their bachelor degree, we will have, they, they will start receiving communications from our internship coordinator who will help them finding a job if they plan to stay in Australia, for example, or start helping them with preparing the paperwork for their industry work placement to make sure that they will progress in time and they will find a good employer by the time they have to start their work our placement and we will monitor um, their progress by Zoom weekly during that one year. After they come back, so after the one year program, um, the work placement, they will come back and finish the last year for the bachelor degree. And this last year will not be studying theory, 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 theory only. 
they will have to use whatever knowledge that they've learned during that 12 months of industry work placement to apply into their restaurant, their recipe, their cuisine um, projects that they have to lead themselves in that 12 month study. So complete the projects themselves and get a higher qualification. Another selling point of this, even better if they finish an advanced diploma of hospitality management because that means they get a one year and a half credit into the bachelor degree. So they only have to study six months on campus before they are sent to do the industry work placement for one year and then go back to school to complete the last year. Um, it's a very good selling point and a very unique program, giving the students one year of work experience, even though when they're on campus. And it's something that I can't really put next to this table because I basically not really allowed to, um, is after they finish this bachelor degree, they will get a two years for a five visa as well. Um, and it's pretty automatic that they don't really have to apply for skill assessment like when they apply for the other four or five with the diploma degree um, qualification. I'm sure that you are very much um, expertise in that area already. But with these two years, let me remind you that with these two years is when they get work experience full time. And plus one year, that means they get three years full time work experiences. And what does that mean? That normally students go to region areas to get three years of work experiences by their postgraduate visa. That's three years instead of two years, like if they stay in non-regional area like um, in Sydney. But with this degree, they actually get three years of work experiences full time. And it's very, very advantageous when they apply for the full skill assessment and they can apply for an independent um, skilled visa later on. They don't really have to wait for sponsorship. Yeah. So, um, and also on the other note, when I mentioned about regional areas as well, that um, I receive a lot of feedback from students um, as well, and agents too, that when a student go regional, um, it's, it's not easy to find a job as well. So, it's not really ideal if they have to go three years to finding job, um, finding work experiences for a full time three years block when actually when they go to regional areas, they cannot find a job. Okay. So, um, let's move on to the next area of study, the, the courses that we offer. I don't mind the time. Yeah, that's our resort and hotel management area. Uh, there are a lot of hotels and resort courses that are running in um, New South Wales, I believe so, but we also have our advantages that I want to list out with you um, here. So, what is the advantages again with Endless? It's because we have a lot of industry partners, we've been here for so long and we've worked with them for many, many projects, other than just deliver qualifications to students. Um, that's why when the students study resort and hotel management with us, um, they get a lot of opportunity to do work placement as well. So in the diploma qualification, the students um, that run for one year, they actually get a nine week of work placement. However, the whole, in the hotel resort management um, qualification and diploma, unlike the certificate for in cookery and patisserie, why shouldn't get paid internship, the student do not get paid in this work placement when it comes to diploma. But if they choose to do the bachelor in resort and hotel management, they will enjoy a 12 month of work placement that is paid as well. Um, on top of that, students get a lot of side visits to hotels, um, especially in the diploma degree, they basically go to um, excursion at hotels every week and students get a chance to do study tours to Thailand as well. Now at the moment, we offer the study tour to Thailand, mainly to Melbourne students, but we're going to develop that in Sydney campus as well. A bit of statistics as well, because um, we love statistics. 
70% of our students will offer employment at the end of their placement in 2017. And that's the generic statistics. But on a daily basis, I do see my students in Sydney starting their shift, the second shift of work placement and already got offered jobs, even though they are international students. So on this side of the screen, you can see the main partners that we work with especially a hotels group, including Meriton, Sofitel, Novotel, or Ibis, are the hotels that we mostly send our students to do um, placement. We also have partnership with the Disney International programs. Um, most of the students that go to Disney programs are our domestic students, but um, because of the visa situation and everything, but it doesn't mean that it's, um, it cannot change in the future. Uh, we also work with TRV Hotels or Barcats International. Barcats is a very famous um, agency to place hospitality and um, work placements as well. So they come to our campus um, very often to recruit students to um, hospitality jobs. Okay. What are the job outcomes when it comes to resort and hotel management? I, I want to include the slides in here because I want to emphasize that um, when, when the students study resort and hotel management, there's actually a lot of um, job outcome and demands out there as well. Not only as a hotel manager, but they can work as housekeeper executive or division managers, front office, event managers, and even a concierge. And the good thing about our diploma um, work experience is that when we put students in a work placement program with hotels, they actually get to work with different divisions. So it doesn't mean that within that nine weeks, they have to work in one position. They actually get to rotate the shifts around so they get a bit of everything. Okay. Now, about the courses that we offer, um, one of the things about our hotel program that is a bit of an advantage as well is that our hotel and resort management programs package run with very flexible exits. So say if the student package from a diploma of hospitality management for one year, advanced diploma one year and a half, Associate degree is considered a higher education that runs for two years. And Bachelor of Resort and Hotel Management, there are two options, three years without an internship and four years with an internship. Now say if you have a student that apply for a whole package of four years from diploma to Bachelor of Hotel and Resort Management. And I always suggest to go with a package from diploma to bachelor rather than doing a bachelor itself for four years because of the following reason. Firstly, the duration will be the same. Unlike the Bachelor of Culinary Management where Diploma of Hospitality Management that runs for two years only gives students one year credit exemption. This program, if the students study diploma for one year, they get a full one year credit exemption into a bachelor degree. So lower entry point plus lower tuition fee as well. And when they apply for a package like this, they have really good flexible exits. And I'll tell you in a minute why. So for example, if they apply for a whole package of diploma in hospitality management, one year to a bachelor, four years. If they exit in the first year, they will get a qualification, say it's diploma in hospitality management. If they finish, after the second year, they get an associate degree in resort and hotel management. If they exit in the third year, they get a bachelor of resort and hotel management. And if they choose to go and do another year, enjoy full-time work under a student visa, then they get a bachelor of resort and hotel management in professional practice. So that gives them a very flexible exit. So if they don't want to follow a four years program anymore and they finish it in the second year, after the second year, they still get an associate degree. So they still get a qualification. Okay. 
So it's the, it's basically the same for students that come from other RTO as well. So say if they finishes a diploma of hospitality management um, with hotel management some in some other RTOs, they can get credit exemption basically standardly um, for one year as well. So they enter the second year, which is the associate degree program. Okay. Now, move on to the last area. Um, I call that an area because in Melbourne, we offer a lot of other qualifications. So we offer a diploma in travel and tourism. We offer a bachelor in travel and tourism as well. But at the moment, we only offer this course in Sydney, which is called Certificate 3 in Aviation Cabin Crew. That, the job outcome of this course is whether students want to become a flight attendant or if they want to become a ground service operator that works on site at the airports. The course runs for six months full time, including a field trip to New Zealand, including everything in the course fees. And um, during this New Zealand trip, they will get to learn about safety procedures. So we partner with Air New Zealand, and that is a virtual, not virtual, like the actual um, imitation of a cabin in their training center where the student will get stimulation of weather hazards and safety and emergency um, situations that they have to tackle on the way and learn. Okay, This course actually equips students with a very wide range of knowledge when it comes to um, becoming a flight attendant or information officer or ground service operators from how to groom your hair, how to dress up, how to sit up, how to talk. There will be a lot of role playing and it will include RSA, first aid, emergency situation and life documentation as well. So basically you have really good advantages when the student go to apply for an airline, because normally um, when someone applies for an airline's training programs, they don't really, they, they start from scratch. So our students actually have the advantages that we offer them all the knowledge. When they come to an interview, they already know more than the rest of the competitors, um, the, the other competitors. And um, also we ask, there's an industry partner that we are working with as well. We're working very closely with um, agency, a hospitality agency called Altara. And Altara, they are um, an agency that places flight attendance jobs as well with most of um, the major airlines in Australia as well. So they often come to our campus on career days as well to talk to our students. So students can get a lot of experiences of how to apply to become a flight attendant and there will be vacancies given like uh, opportunities given to them when they're on campus as well. Okay. So that those are the courses that we offer at the moment at William Ellis um, City. Now we keep in mind that we will keep adding courses along the way. Like for example, the bachelor courses which is starting from this year. Um, so we will look at developing more courses and bringing more courses from Melbourne to start delivering in Sydney. Um, and uh, along the way, we will keep updating you whenever we have new courses, for sure. Now, what are the selling points um, of William Ellis Institute? So there are the courses that we offer. Those are our reputations. What do we, why, why, we, why are you studying with us? If you see on the screen here, there's a lot of, you know, selling points that I've listed out. Um, we have really good, like, modern and new campus. This campus, we just moved in since August 2018, and we basically built it from scratch. Uh, we have the biggest training kitchen in New South Wales, and all of our facilities are very modern and very up-to-date. Um, Location-wise, it's pretty convenient. So in Sydney, we are based in Alexandria, which is a cuisine hub. Uh, it's only one stop from Central, 
and um, it's, a, it's a very good area and very spacious. It's very bike and walking friendly as well, so it's very um, easily assessed by public transport. We owned by the Victoria government, that means we're not a private institution, so our students are completely protected, so there would not be any circumstances when we close the campus, we stop a qualification without notice, because we are not really allowed to do so. Um, we have really strong industry relationships, as I keep mentioning during the presentation, um, and that stems from the projects that I mentioned before, that we don't really just deliver qualifications to students, but we do industry training in New South Wales for at least seven years before we set up this campus in 2013. That being said, for example, one of the projects that we deliver on a yearly basis, twice a year with the Department of Education in New South Wales, is that we train all the hospitality teachers in high schools in New South Wales. So in, in Australia, in New South Wales, for example, in high schools, um, domestic students, they have a subject called hospitality as an elective course. And all of the teachers that teach hospitality in high schools in New South Wales do the training with us to have the qualifications to actually come back and teach at the high school. Um, we also offer multiple intakes during the year. So for vocational courses, Certificate 3, Certificate 4, we offer um, intakes February, April, July and September. And for diploma and higher qualification, um, higher education, we offer in February and July. So basically we can take students all year round. Work placements of 10 weeks during term five is also our specialty because as I mentioned, we don't offer that in Melbourne at all. Um, certificate for in cookery and patisserie is when they enjoy that paid internship that is very exclusive to the Sydney campus. In terms of price, we are very competitive in terms of uh, compared to the quality of education that we offer for students, for the facilities, for the quality, for the reputation, and for the certainty that we're not going to close or having any issues during the course because we have to be committed to deliver the course um, in the, the, the optimal quality. Um, the price that we're offering is actually very competitive. So that runs for certificate four and certificate three, that is 7,000, um, that's 8,000, sorry, 8,100. Um, per semester, and for a diploma, it's 7,800 per semester, especially for our degree courses. So first you need to get a bachelor, in university they can pay 26, 40,000 per year, but with us, um, we offer the course, the degree higher education courses at a very competitive price, that is 9,500 per semester. And even better, during the work placement year, so remember that when I mentioned the bachelor degrees, we've got one year full-time block of work. The students only have to pay 2,375 per semester during that work experience year. Okay? And something that's very exclusive to our Sydney campus as well is our tuition fee installment. So in Melbourne, the students have to pay for the whole semester in advance for vocational courses. But for Certificate 3, Certificate 4, and Diploma in Sydney campus, students can choose to pay every three months. So they break down semester into two parts of payments as well. So that's the instruments that we're offering only for Sydney campus. And what is very good for Asians as well is that if you complete the applications fully in details, we have really good turnaround time for admissions that is 20, four hours for um, uh, 48 hours for offer letter and 24 hours for COE. Okay. There you go. So that basically the selling points that we are offering um, and that makes us really have this interview. Something that I want to mention as well that um, Johnny asked me earlier during the day as well about nationality mix. Nationality mix um, wise, at the moment, our most popular 
populations are Indonesians, um, uh, Korean students, and Thai students. That it's about, but we don't really have a big, big, big number, like say 50% are come from the same nationality, that's not true. So Indonesian student account for about 25 to 30% of our um, nationality mix pool. Uh, Korean students probably about 15 to 20% and Thai about 10%. So leaving the remaining percentages pretty spread um, very evenly among other nationalities that we have. So we've got Vietnamese students, we've got Malaysian students, we've got European students, we've got Latin American students as well, and Chinese student, Taiwanese, Hong Kong. So it comes from student, our students' pools come from all over the world, basically. So um, the, the, the variety of our nationality mix is also a very good selling point because the students don't have to sit, for example, sit in a class of full of international students only. Okay. So um, another selling point for the Sydney campus that I know that the staffs of um, Johnny or Wayne have been here, they can also witness the same thing as I do, is that we only have, so compared to 15,000 students population in Melbourne that we have, we only have about 300 students here in Sydney giving us the capacity of paying attention to every single student that we have. So we have a smaller sizes of class. Uh, practical units wise, it's only about 12 to 14 students per class. So the students will always receive equal attention from the trainers and the trainers know everybody. And it's like a family atmosphere here. So if you have students that are a little bit younger, or want a bit more attention, for example, I strongly recommend the city campus because we can actually look after them like a family. In Melbourne, it's not that we don't want to do so, it's just we have too many students in Melbourne. So sometimes it's a little bit harder and more challenging to do the same thing as we do in Sydney. Okay, so it comes to the very last part of our presentation today is our requirements, uh, our entry requirements. So we've got academic um, requirements and we've got English proficiency requirement as well. So in terms of academics, very straightforward. It's mostly that students finish year 12, whether in Australia or in um, offshore. For VET programs, um, they have to get an ATAS or a 50 or a bachelor program, 60. And if they as I mentioned before, if they finish a diploma, advanced diploma of hospita hospitality management, they don't have to prove this academic requirement for sure, of course. Um, now you see here A to score of 50, A to score of 60, and Australia year 12 qualification. In some flexible circumstances, we do accept students that finishes year 11 um, in Australia. From offshore, apparently they have to finish year 12. But if the students are in Australia and haven't done A to score, haven't gone for an A to test, um, we do accept students in case by case that finish year 11 only. But we will look at the transcripts, the attendance, especially the English proficiency to assess if we can take the students or not. So it's really case by case. And I strongly recommend that if you have a case that you feel like, oh, I don't know if um, I'm confident that the students will pass the admissions requirement, for example, you can always just send me a quick text or email um, to check with me before putting in the applications because it takes a lot of work to fill out the form and then put in the application um, documents and everything. So we can work together and say, oh, this is uh, Kristen, this is the history of the student, this is the background of the student. Do you think that you can accept the student? Then, then we can discuss and if I confirm, oh yes, you can do it, then you can start working on it in the case that you are a little bit unsure about the application. Okay. Um, English requirement wise is also straightforward for VET program certificate 3, certificate 4, diploma, academic IELTS 5.5, no band below 5.0, bachelor program overall 6.0, no band below 5.5. We also recognize PTE, TOEIC, TOEFL. Um, page 56 of the International Course Guide is here. 
This course guide can be found on our website and um, Johnny, I can share with you the PDF file as well so you can share it to the agent partners as well. Sure, thank you. Okay, yeah. Uh, page 56 is where you can find all the entry requirements in terms of English. And we also have Ellicott's partners. So on page 57 is where you can find the list of our Ellicott's partners as well. Um, so if the student needs more English, they can choose to do an Ellicott's package and then apply for a package visa as well. And what we request from the Ellicott Center is to offer a letter of offer and a recommendation letter as well, stating that uh, from the Elico Center, we believe that if the student finishes this program, they will be able to enter our William Analyst Institute program later after these programs. Um, this is a recommendation letter. Now some agents ask me, so what if the student do not be, uh, progress as the recommendation letter? Remember recommendation is only recommendation. So if the student needs to extend the English later on shore, it's completely fine. Okay? Right. So, something that I need to um, emphasize as well, what we're looking for in the application process that make sure that you fill out all the information in the application form because um, our compliance team is working very, very strictly. So we will not be able to accept or offer students without a fill, complete application forms. And I'm sure that um, probably we've been saying, saying that to all agents as well, that um, make sure you do that. It will save us time. It will save your time as well, because if the application is complete, we actually have a really quick turnover, turnaround time. Uh, application form, academic background, documents, uh, transcript, English proficiency, student statement is very important as well. And we will have you because in the application form, actually in the application form in section number 10 is when we listed out four questions that you can answer based on those questions to complete the student statements. Okay. And what we're looking for is genuine students. Now, I understand that many students come from different categories or portfolios. Um, we only want to accept genuine students because um, we offer the, one of the best qualities of education in Australia with very competitive price, very good facilities. But we don't want, because we're government institutions at the end of the day, um, profits, benefits and everything, it's not, of course every business look at that, but it's not, to us, it's not the top priority. We want to train hospitality staff and hospitality generation for Australia, and that's our mission. So we really want us, um, you to help us to recruit genuine students who have real passion in culinary and hospitality industry. Okay? Right. Application checklist. Make sure that application form is completed all the documents are certified by you, it's fine, you don't have to go for a GP. Um, English proficiency documents, including IELTS, TOEFL, um, PT reports, or if the student do packages, it costs offer and recommendation letter. Remember that it's two separate documents. An offer letter from the institutions and the institution's recommendation letter as well. So most of our any cost partners, they're very well aware that they have to do that for us. So feel like don't hesitate to request that from them because they basically know our requirements as well and they have templates and everything. Okay. Student statement SOP very important and all of the other visa documents, CV, work reference, and everything as well, certified by you. If the students come from offshore, it has to be certified by the office offshore because we will request that the offshore staff look at the origin documents and certify it, okay? All right, so all admissions inquiries, please contact our international office. Our turnaround time is 48 hours, COE is 24 hours. 
But as I mentioned before, you can always send the applications first to me. We can scan them together or work on um, the background together before you send in the official applications. Um, many circumstances out of like, we can be flexible as well. Um, like for example, when Johnny has a student before that does not study in one of our early course partners, but when he believes that our student's English is good enough, I trust agents, I trust my agents because we don't recruit all agents everywhere in the industry. So when we select you as our agents, that means we trust your decision as well. So for example, when Johnny believes that, I say, okay, just come in, I will, pref I will offer a placement test for students, even though they don't really come from our partner, any call center is completely fine. So we can work together, support each other mutually, and make the application process smoothly. Okay? Um, that's the end of my presentation. All if right. you have Thanks any... a lot, Christine. Yep. No worries. Uh, uh, I think we will put a Q&A uh, session now. Yeah. Uh, before I read out all the questions in the group chat, so I have a question for you, Christine. Oh, yeah. So for the Bachelor of Culinary Management, yeah. can you hear me clearly? Yeah, yeah. Sure. There's a 12 months industry work placement. Yes. I'm just wondering, is the, during the 12 months, does the student need to pay tuition fee? Yes, they have to pay tuition fee, but they only pay 2,375 per semester during that year. Okay, sure, yeah. sure. So it will be much lower than the normal tuition fee. That's right. So the normal tuition fee is 9,500 per semester. But during that work placement year, they only paid 2,375 per semester. So that's less than $5,000. Right. And basically they have a whole year working full time in the industry. Mm. Understood, sure, sure. Okay, sure. I think we have a few questions from our agent partner, Christine. No worries. Uh, I just read it out. Uh, so we have one question here asking like, how is the situation in the school at this moment? I think what my agent partner referring is, uh, are they like still come to the college to study or they're doing online uh, courses? That's a very good question um, that we are working really hard on in terms of supporting students in this situation as well. Now, you know that in Australia at the moment, I'm not sure if the agent is onshore or offshore, but um, in Australia now, it's national lockdown, but schools remain open. Um, so we don't have the policy of closing the campus in Australia and in New South Wales. So as the government institutions, we have to remain open. So it's open at the moment, but all of the theories, lessons have been delivered online. So students can stay home and do online classes in terms of theory classes. For practical units, now it's very special for us that makes us a little bit more challenge, that gives us a little bit more challenge than the universities because we have practical units. Then we can't really run kitchen operations online. Yeah, we can't really do that. So we remain open. We have practical lessons available on campus, it's running as usual. But we support our students by being very flexible. So if the students are concerned about this situation, they don't have to come to campus. They just need to let us know that they are absent. So we keep records of what classes have they been missing and we will arrange extra catch up class later on when they are happy to come back and when this situation and this lockdown is over. So these catch-up lessons that we are going to offer is completely free of charge. So they don't have to pay for anything. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah. I read out the next question, Christine. If yeah. students do package to bachelor, will mm -hmm. students have two sessions of work, uh, work placement? One in certificate four for 10 weeks and another one in bachelor for 12 months? That's correct, yeah. So they will have both. They will have 10 weeks during their term five of the last semester, um, which is uh, term five of semester three, they will get 10 weeks. So that 10 weeks period is when we were going to help them very, very closely to find a job. 
and um, they get the one year full-time work in the bachelor degree. But during that one year, um, Alice will help them with the list of employers, but we don't really place them in our you know, industry connections anymore because one year is a very, very long period of time. And some students might not like the job that we give to them. And in our um, experiences, students have no problem at all finding their own employment during that one year program. No problem at all. Now, I want to explain a little bit more about um, the difference between the bachelor in culinary management and hotel resort management. The work experiences duration in both courses are one year. They are the same, one year. But in the culinary management course, we put it in the third year. The reason why we put it in third year because we want them to come back and apply whatever they've done in that year into their own restaurant projects. Okay? But in the hotel and resort course, we actually put the work placement at the end of the course. So they get that one year plus two years work experience in their graduate visa. So they will get a three years full-time work block. And for hotel and resort industry, it's much easier for students to find a good job, by a sponsor, by a career opportunity in the long run if they work continuously for three years for the same employer. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned earlier the 12 months uh, industry work placement. Yeah. The student can uh, do it offshore in overseas. Absolutely. Go to Bali, London, Frankfurt, anywhere in the world. Right, right. So how about the certificates for? Certificates for the well, they have to be in Australia. Yeah. They have to be in Australia. Yeah. 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 All right, the next question, Christine. Yeah. Um, are you accept Duolingo or person English test? I think... That's PTE, right? Uh, this is something new as well for me. Duolingo, I think there's a language platform for testing. But um, yeah, I think need to need to find out more about this. You familiar with this, Christine? Duolingo? Duolingo, no. No, oh, yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think something that uh, we need to look into it because I also received a few inquiries from oh. my agent partner about this. This, I think, another platform of the uh, English uh, language testing. What is it called? Duolingo. Uh, Duolingo. Duolingo. D U O L I N G O. Yeah. Okay. D U O L I N G O. Okay. L I N G O. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So once you find out, you can let me know, and I can uh, pass it to them. Christine. Yeah, sure. I'm going to. Um, at the moment, we don't really accept that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Know that. Um, as a matter of fact, but um, you know, if that's popular, and then. Have, we have receiving inquiries, and I will definitely reflect that into my feedback. Yeah. Yeah. In the future. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next question is, uh, what is the minimum age to enter in Vietnam English? Seventeen years old. Seventeen years old. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. But seventeen years old, and they will have to sign guardian paperwork and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Um. Next question is, do you accept student from? Vietnam high risk area? It's a very sensitive question. <laughs> well, we treat all of the <laughs> students equally everywhere in the world. Now, basically, it's, it comes to a very, very uh, case by case basis, as you know, Tony. And um, we look at that, we look at the student statement. And we look at the financial, we look at the history background, um, your uh, education background, everything. So I'm not going to say no, no. Yeah, of course not. Yeah, yep. but mm -hmm. we will look at that case by case. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think as long as the student is genuine and then quality students, yeah. so um, William Engis will will consider. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yo, all right. So I have another question here. How about the visa issue for Vietnamese student? when they have one file in New Zealand. Oh, okay. I think I think if the student got refused visa from New Zealand, mm. so what do you think? You will take the students? Or? That's a very interesting question. Now we have to look at what is the reason why did they get refused? 
and then we work on that component as well. Now, New Zealand is completely different from, um, I'm not saying that it's different, but I mean the immigration record of Australia and New Zealand is completely different. But in the declaration, I'm sure that there is one in the application, visa application that have been rejected in other um, visa application as well, right? So um, it's a very interesting question. I've never had that case before. Now, again, I'm not going to say no, um, because it's case by case. We have to look at why the student get refused. And if there's any improvement from that, or if the decision that they made was precise or not. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Sure. So basically, it's a case by case. We uh, still can assess it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I think there's is any other questions, guys? We have two minutes uh, before we end this. Okay, sure. So I got another question here. If yep. students already have diploma in business program in Indonesia uh -huh. and they want to continue their study in William English in hospitality program, we said that we can offer them to enroll too. So basically, students have finished a uh, diploma in Indonesia. Yeah. And then they want to uh, continue study to William English. So which hospitality program that you actually uh, uh, can, can recommend to the students? I mean, if they've done the hospital, if they've done a business, it's completely different from cookery and patisserie. So if they want, they still can start with a certificate for in, in cookery or patisserie because it's, it's completely different. The business one and the, <clears throat> and the cookery and patisserie are completely different programs. So there are relevant um, explanations. Let's say this is what they genuinely like to do. They want to pursue that and Indonesia, for example, um, hospitality, cookery, patisserie are getting very, very popular. So they, they, if they're just interested in doing that, it's completely fine. Other than that, if they want to pursue for a bachelor degree, it's also recommended because if they've already finished a diploma program, they want to go for a higher degree, it's fine. It's yep. a good pathway as well. Great. All right. Thank you. Okay, I think um, there's no more questions. Uh, okay, so what we do, if you do have any questions more after this uh, online training, please uh, contact uh, one of our uh, RME, uh, Regional Marketing Executive uh, in your region. So from Vietnam, we have IV, Indonesia, you can contact myself, and onshore, you, you can contact myself as well. So, and then um, what I do, I will uh, circulate this uh, PowerPoint presentation slide uh, to you guys as well. And then if, if you do have any uh, requests for marketing uh, material, so also happy to email it to you as well. All right. All right. Thanks a lot, Christine, for your time. No worries. Uh, very fantastic, excellent uh, uh, presentation. I think we, we learned a lot. We saw a lot of uh, uh, good selling point for William English here. Yeah, feel free to contact me anytime. And um, for Asian partners, if you have any questions, feel free to contact Johnny or any other yes staff member. And then I believe that you will pass that on to me and then we can work together. Okay? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank uh, stay you. safe everyone and stay healthy. Thank you guys. You stay you. safe, stay safe. Yeah, sure. bye now. Okay, bye, bye for now. Bye.